Okay, so now we have our pieces cut off here and we have our door card that we're going to be attached into. Um, so as you may notice, this uh, surface here is a little curved um, and what we want to try and do is get that flattened down just so that uh, no edges are sticking up from the, uh, the photo etch which might snag on something and it would also kind of look off in the, uh, off in the after shots. So what I'm just going to do is with a uh, medium grit sanding stick I'm just going to remove all that raised detail and just move into a heavier heavier grid a bit just to knock it down I'm trying to stay on that sort of bubble that's there and not wreck any of the surrounding photo etch or not sorry photo etch the uh the plastic because it's a lot easier to remove a scratch on a nice smooth body compared to the complex curves on an interior cool so um one of the more difficult things with putting photo etch down, especially on, uh, especially small photo etch like this, but uh, on something with like a mesh, is uh, when we apply the glue, we're not looking, we're not going to place the glue, you know, right smack dab in the center, because then when we press on this and the glue depresses, it's going to fill up all of those little mesh cavities, ruining the texture, and it's going to look like it's been glued on. Um, when it's all primed and painted. So to get around this, uh, we've got our trusty little um, applicator here, just kind of homemade. It's just a wooden dowel and a uh, kind of a copper wire that's uh, thin enough. And then I'm just gonna kind of bend it back a little bit and back on itself. And then I have a more uh, tightly controlled spot where I can put the photo etch down. So I'm gonna get some thinner CA. So I've got three different kinds. I've got a medium, um, or a thick, a medium, and a, um, a thin. Uh, for this one, I'm kind of just going with a medium because I don't want it too thick to where it's just gonna bunch up, but I also want it to kind of run a little bit. So just a little dab on here. And uh, sometimes you can use a, you know, um, a little bit of blue tack on a, a toothpick, or in this case, I have a wax pencil uh, from Green Stuff World uh, to kind of pick up the parts so I can put a light amount of pressure and it picks it up off of whatever surface I'm working on. And I did notice on these guys that they actually have a Bose logo in that kind of center part here. So I want to try and line it up with the actual line of the door card. So go ahead and take a little bit of CA. And I'm going to go around the edge where there is no, or there's a solid kind of uh, edge on the photo etch part. And then just a small dab right in the middle where that Bose logo is. And then I can take my wax pencil here and just lightly drop it onto the surface, like so. As you can kind of see there, a little bit of it kind of scooted down below the Bose logo, uh, but the rest of it's kind of remained under that mesh. So when the primer does go on top of it, it's going to, uh, it, it's not going to show as, as bad. I'll go ahead and do the same thing here for now I've got a little bit 
nicer of a surface that I can actually apply this to a little bit thicker area to secure this at photo etch piece and then I'm just going to do a small dab down at this corner and then on that corner there and same thing light pressure with the kind of wax pencil and lightly apply it to the surface like that. I think there might be a little bit that went off before. So again, we're just taking a precise applicator and kind of run it on there. Make a little bit of a stick. Kind of scrape that off. Wet a cotton stick. Earbud. Cotton bud, whatever you want to call it. And then just clean up all of that excess that's on there. Just like that. And there we go. There is our completed door card on the driver's side. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then we'll come back and work on the next piece of the interior. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the, uh, the main sort of tub body here. Um, then we're gonna kind of work on the uh, sort of back half here. So we've got 90, 6, 5, 11, and 10, which is kind of one on top of the other. And it's just the same sort of uh, um, maneuver as before. I'm just going to slightly cut out the part that we desire and then put it on, if I can find the part. Where did you go? I saw you. I just saw you. Okay, well, I guess we're going to go for yeah, we're gonna go for these parts here first. So drop it down so you can see a little bit better. And we're going to start with uh, photo piece number 11. This guy here. I was getting confused with this part. So again, we're gonna butt it up. As you can see here too, I'm not moving my hand around too much. I'm keeping my hand where it's comfortable. And uh I have maximum control over the amount of pressure that I'm placing down onto the part so that I get a nice clean cut and I'm using consistent pressure so that way I'm not fudding things up too too bad. Quite a bit. There we go. And same deal. We're just going to take a bit of our CA. If applied properly, you don't need gobs of it. The same thing with um, the other sort of uh, extra thin cement. You don't need a lot of it as long as it the surface prepared properly. <clears throat> you do not need a whole load of it. So same thing on this one. Where's the bows? There we go. Just making sure I have the bows logo in the correct orientation. So again. And then the part. Stay 
Hey there. Oh, how many issues? Okay. going to give that a minute to dry because we have a part going on top of it so we want to make sure that the glue is all uh, set properly and then when that's done we'll go ahead and install that part okay so uh, like we did with our uh, speakers here on the door cards we sanded all that texture down smooth so we have a nice mating surface for the glue and this one has some very, very thin edges on it. So we're going to try and be very precise with our gluing here. Just some small little dots. And then placing a piece. This is probably one of the better investments that I've made in my modeling career is getting a nice uh, quality wax pencil to pick up and place uh, photo wet parts because not all the, the uh, depending on the temperature in the room, the putty can change uh, your like blue tack. Uh, can change consistency quite easily and it leaves an oily residue. Uh, the wax pencil, you know, just a, a Q-tip moistened with saliva will wipe off any of the excess uh, wax and uh, and help put the, uh, put the part on. So definitely if you're using a lot of photo etch, I would recommend getting one of these. So uh, we're going to finish off the other speaker here. There's a little kind of ring that goes in that what I would assume would be a center cup holder. Uh, and then once those are on, um, I'll kind of go ahead and move on to the dashboard, which has uh, quite a few pieces that are going on now. And then stuff like this gauge cluster are gonna go on after when all of the, uh, the paints on the decals are in place. And then this will be kind of like a polished bezel to go on top of it. So we'll just go ahead and uh, skip it to finishing this and then getting all these parts in, in place okay so the next part of this is having us remove the stock pedals and replacing with the photo edge piece it doesn't really give any clear indication here um, other than to cut the pedals off so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this flat edge at the bottom and I'm going to make that my cut line so I'm just going to take a pair of clippers and just cut it just like that so I have that extra part standing up and then I'm just going to sand it down ever so slightly, kind of match that other edge. And as you can probably tell there, there's some sort of fresh plastic that's showing. I don't know if it'll actually focus in there. But you'll see that sort of uh, shiny plastic and then the flat stuff. I'm just trying to make that all flat and level. And that should be good enough. Looks satisfactory to me. 
and we'll go ahead and take our pedal assembly. <clears throat> There's this guy here. I'm just going to kind of take the knife and run it around the edge of the piece. Because it's kind of right in the middle, it's not near the edge. So rather than taking the whole protective cover sheet off, I'm just going to kind of isolate that one part and attempt to remove him in. I said remove. There we go. Remove the plastic from that one area. pressure this is a thicker piece so you might actually hear the or this piece of uh, photo which is a little bit thicker than the previous one so you might actually hear when the knife uh, passes through the, uh, the part and again same technique I'm just slowly kind of lifting and raising the edge up until I have that part uh, removed so we'll just set that down there and it's kind of giving us a, it doesn't really give us the, the angles for it, but um, I'm confident that we're going to fold that you can probably see these tick marks. We're going to fold this edge back and then just kind of play with the, uh, uh, the fold lines here just to get it to sit properly. For this, I'm just going to use a long set of uh, needle nose. Kind of, kind of scoop it off to the side and lightly handle this. Kind of line those two tick marks up with uh, the edge of the pliers here, and then I'm just going to apply some slight downward pressure just to get these guys to sit at roughly 90 degrees. So I have that nice 90 degree corner to it. And I come on the other side here. I'm going to ever so slightly bend up this edge to about, I'm going to say 45 degrees ish. the other side here. Same sort of deal, just kind of marking it, lining it up with the edge of my pliers here. And then I'm just going to give it a slight, oh, didn't end well properly. Slight 45 degree bend. Like that. And then with these two kind of pedal pieces, I'm bringing down just a little bit. So, as you can see there, we've kind of got our gas pedal sticking a little bit more and our brake pedal sitting ever so slightly inwards. And then same Ryman routine. I'm going to, because I've got a little bit of a thicker part here, I'm going to get a little bit more glue on that part there. And where are my tweezers? I'm just going to get a. Oh, those ones are broken. Just get a nice. Set of tweezers and kind of lightly place this and hold it for a brief moment just to let the CA kick in. 
like so. And there we go. There's our petals done. And what I'm going to do now is because that's such a very thin and fragile joint, just to strengthen it slightly, I'm going to take a little bit of CA. I'm going to overlap both the uh, metal part and the uh, the plastic underneath. So that should create a very nice uh, secure joint between these two parts. So I'm not worried about uh, you know breaking it off too much. And that's pretty much going to be it for the dashboard. Um, yeah, and these uh, extra parts here are going to go on uh, after the fact because they're a nice kind of a polished metal look. So we're going to keep that and uh, just put them on. Uh, but in the meantime, all of these extra bezels are going to be put on after. So now we just need to paint um, this dashboard part. So we'll put that off to the side and we'll get started on the steering wheel hub. So the, one of the things I try and do is keep the uh, part attached to the sprue as much as possible to avoid uh, one, losing track of the numbers on some duplicate pieces, but it also gives a good spot for these uh, alligator clips to kind of hold on to. Um, so while you're spraying, it's, uh, you've got, you're not holding the piece and then getting paint all over your fingers. You actually have a little bit of a, a standoff. Uh, these are just uh, kind of like long toothpicks. They're about, I'd say about three or four inches long. Um, and then the alligator clips I bought separately. Sometimes they have them on skewers. Um, depending, um, excuse me, depending on your needs, um, rather than buying a 20 or $30 set of uh, sticks like this from say Mr. Hobby or Tamiya, just go and get a 200 pack of, of toothpicks or skewers, whatever you wish, and the alligator clips, which are a less than a dime a dozen. Um, I think I made about 400 of these because I have multiple projects on the go, uh, but I made 400 of these and it was less than five or six dollars on Amazon. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're doing these. So what I'm gonna do is kind of cut off the excess part of the actual sprue. So I've got my nice neat part here. And then photo wash piece number 33, which is gonna be this guy. Yeah, we'll be peeling out the plastic from this. to cut out our part. Again, light pressure underneath. And once you get the hang of it, once you've done one or two, you're just taking your time it just almost becomes second nature. You're putting the exact same amount of pressure on top of it. You're moving through things a little bit more smooth. You always want to make sure you're careful and paying attention. But at the same time, you know, you get used to uh, these things quite easily. So that part went on really nice and easy. Put that off to the side in our kind of spray stand thing. We'll go ahead and move on to the steering wheel itself, which is gonna be a little bit interesting, um, mainly because there's about three different kind of materials going on here. There's a red, there's carbon fiber, and there's the kind of uh, black 
sort of satin finish. Um, this one might be a little bit difficult because it's having us put on uh, this kind of photo etch piece here, which is um, an etch, right? So you've got that, but then on the steering wheel itself, there's already kind of texture going on there. So while it might be in the instructions, you might have the part for it, sometimes it might not be necessary to use the photo etch parts. It, it might just be almost a double redundancy. Like the, the kit part itself is the same, if not better quality and better detail than that photo etch part. And you're also just making it a hassle for no reason whatsoever. So just keep that in mind, guys, when you are doing this. Um, y you know, it's, y you gotta pay attention to the instructions because sometimes you might just overdo things for, you know, the sake of it just read so in the instructions. Um, but we are gonna go put that nice uh, GTR logo down, which is gonna be 88. Gonna be that small guy there. Cool, so this is gonna be fun. That was very close. I don't know if you guys saw that, but that shot up and then landed right here. Very, very careful. So I'm just gonna take this, ever so slightly touch it, and then just kind of keep it, hopefully, right there. And then the ever so slightest drop of CA, lightest pressure from the wax pen, and try and center it. So we're going to go ahead and prime that and, uh, and paint it up with uh, some nice red, black, and uh, carbon fiber. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you guys too much with the uh, rest of the interior build. It's pretty much copy and paste of everything else here, plus all of the, uh, uh, the stock kit pieces. So uh, I'm going to get those done separately and then just go ahead and cut to um, assembly after paint. Um, one of the things you should pay attention to, however, is this edge here on, um, on the stock kit. So just to show you quickly, I'm going to grab some kind of masking tape just to temporarily hold things in place. four equal pieces and I'm going to dry fit oops and dry fit these parts together The important
importance of dry fitting is to make sure you get things right and glue them once so you're not going in afterwards and being like oh that's backwards oh that's not going to fit and then you've got epoxy or you've got uh, cyan or CA glue that is quickly drying and you must rectify your mistake in that short amount of time so so there's our tub dry fitted together and I'm gonna take the uh, stock chassis or the sorry not the stock chassis this is the uh, resin body and I'm gonna drop in here just so that I can see exactly what I'm working with so there is it an edge that I can see in here that this should sit on and I just want to kind of see from the top side view where I'm running into those issues so again kind of vague on all these parts but I'm kind of going to draw a, uh, a point from the back here, which would be right around in that area. And then cutting it off here. So essentially, well, I could actually just kind of flip it over and do it that way. That might actually be easier. So I'm going to so rather than trying to cut on this curved surface on the outside, I'm just going to kind of mark on the back sides and then just use this kind of flat surface to, uh, to mitigate that. So um, I'm gonna finish putting it, all the rest of the ancillaries in here. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this, and then when we come back, these will all be in separate parts. Um, everything will be decaled, finished, glued up, and then we can just go ahead and kind of test fit it in the body, see how it looks, and we'll bid you fair do after that. So, see you guys when this is all painted and ready to be assembled. Alright guys, and here we go. This is the completed tub uh, for the Nissan uh, GTR by Top Secret. Um, as you can see here, there's a, about 95% completed. I've still got the, uh, the leather cover there to do, fill in these uh, two air vents. Um, but other than that, it's about 95% complete uh, with all the parts from the kit. Um, Again, very highly detailed, a lot of nice little parts. Some of them are redundant, so I left them out. Uh, but the majority of them did uh, go in and make it in here. Um, so we have our, you know, the seat belts installed here for the rear seat. And then we also have the seat belts installed here for the passenger and driver. Uh, this end is being left up because it's actually getting attached to the inside of the uh, body right on the pillars up here. So just note that if you do decide to make this kit, you probably want to follow the uh, standard instructions unless you're doing something different to the interior. Um, but we've got the uh, three photo edge pieces on the surface or on the uh, roof liner. And when it's all said and done, it kind of slips in through the front here first and then seats itself nice in the back and there we have it there is our completed interior all nicely tucked away um, went fairly easily and uh, hassle free so um, that does it for the uh, the interior um, so thanks again for watching the video guys make sure to like and subscribe hit the notification bell so you don't miss new episodes that come out for this um, make sure to follow any social media pages that you might be a part of um, and then as always your feedback is greatly appreciated um, next video we're actually going to go start and doing the brakes and the other parts of the running gear uh, and then get that finalized and then after all of that's been completed and our groundwork is good to go then we're going to start working on the exterior of the body so you don't want to miss that one out guys uh, so thanks again for watching and have a great day